Hello guys. So this week we are going to talk about environment variables. So what is the best way to use environment variables in your app? So we typically use environment variables to store sensitive uh, information like API keys or API secrets that you don't want others to be able to view in your code base, right? So I'm going to go through the three methods you can use to access the environment variables and their pros and cons. So the first method is you can hard code those secrets in your code. So you may have a variable called uh, my secret key, for example, which should hold the values of uh, your secret, right? So this is called um, hard coding your secrets into your code and this is the worst way to store your secrets because anybody who has access to the code can be able to read and see your secret and you may think that nobody does this anymore but actually people still use this method to store secrets and there are bots that are dedicated to scraping these secrets from public uh, code sites like github for example and there was also a case with uh, a device called the rabbit r1 where security researchers were able to access uh, its code base and were able to discover a lot of uh, the API secrets had coded in the code. So what is the pro of this method? There's no pros to using this method to store your API keys. So what is the second way? Well, you probably know about this. You can use .n files. So instead of hard coding your secrets in uh, your code, you create a .n file where you can define your secrets. So my secret key, then you store uh the value of your secret key like that so the idea of n files is that all your secrets will be stored in this file that is ignored by your version control tool so for git for example you git ignore the dot n files so these files will never be committed and uh, only you can see them so after you store your values in your dot n file how do you access them in your code well for javascript you use the process dot n object so instead of hard coding here we could do process dot n dot our key to our environment variable but this is not all so if we try uh, to run our file here you can see that the value of uh, our secret is undefined it's not automatically added to our process.env variable so you have to load it so that's why you use external libraries that do this so the most popular library that does this is dot uh, env so we can uh, install the dot env library and then we can uh, import it like that and then and then and then we initialize it like that so after we initialize it dot env will automatically read our environment variables and add them to process dot env so they will automatically read them from our dot env file so that's why if you see the log here we now get the value of uh, the my secret key so what are the problems of this method well this is more secure because you're not committing your code to version control so malicious actors cannot scrape them from the internet for example and your secrets stay safe another upside to using uh, this method is you can have have multiple uh, environments by using uh, multiple environment files. So for example, we can have .env uh, production for production environments. So you could have a secret key for prod and then inside your code, you could uh, load uh, the correct environment variables according to your, to where you're running the environment from. So for example, for .env, you can give it a path and then we check uh, if uh, process.env.nodeenv uh, equals to production then we can load dot uh, n dot uh, production and then otherwise we load dot uh, n so something like that so right now we are loading the local n parts but if we set the node n uh, property uh, to production then uh, the n variable for production will be red so what are the cons of this well we are not committing this dot n file to version control right but our code can still read the environment variables. So that means even all libraries that we import can read the process.env object to get all the environment variables that you use. So not only you can access the variables, also all the code that you use and import. So if you had malicious code inside your app, then it could just read those values and upload them to their server. So you don't have protection there. 
So how do you protect against this? Well, there's a third method that you can use to read the environment variables, and that is using dedicated secret managers. So secret managers manage the environment variables for you so that you don't have them anywhere in your code, not even in .env files. So the idea is you use a secret manager API to authenticate a user and then now fetch the environment variables via their API. So there are several secret managers out there. There is the AWS secret manager. There is the secret manager by Google Cloud. There is also Vault by HashiCorp. And then there is also .env Vault. So this .env library that you're using here also has a service that provides a dedicated secret manager for what we want to achieve. So let's test this .env Vault. So to start a new .env Vault, you run the command npx .env Vault at uh, latest and then new so this will create a new project so you just press y to open that project in a new browser so let's call it secrets um new like that so this will create a new project in their platform so after you create a project the next step is to log in so you need to run this command so let's log in so this will get you a new login url so let's also open that url and then we click login to finalize login. So your vault is now successfully loaded into .env. And then you can open it by running .env vault, npx .env vault open. So here is our project. And here is where we can add secrets. So you can see in our new project here, we can have various types of secrets. We can have development, CI, staging, or production secrets. So once you add a secret here, you'll be able to access it in your app. You don't need to also add it in in your .env file in your app. So since we have a couple of secrets already in our in our .env files, we can push them to the .env platform. So you run .env push and then if we come to our secrets here, we should be able to have our secrets that we added in our end file. And then we can also add new secrets. So we can add my secret API key, for example, and then let's just call it uh, my secret API key, right? And then we add it in our development environment. So how do we access this secret in our local setup here? So remember to push our secrets, we ran a .env vault push. So we can pull them into our project with a .env pull. And then you can see in our .env file, our secrets will be automatically. So for development keys, uh, using the .env vault pull, we'll pull them automatically into our .env file. So what if you want uh, to store keys without them having to appear anywhere in your code base? So for example, let's uh, say we want to build um, production uh, keys, right? So we can run .env vault open uh, production, which will open our production interface uh, in the browser, right? So automatically we have uh, the keys that we had set in development, but here they are empty. So these are uh, going to be only production keys, right? So we can say this is uh, my secret uh, production production key, and these are uh, we can call it uh, my secret API uh, key production, something like that. And then we save it, right? So how do we get access to these variables? Well, one way is we could do a .env pool uh, production. So that pulls the keys into your .env production. Now, so what is the usefulness of uh, using the .env vault? So the usefulness of using the vault is you can encrypt these keys so that they can only be read via an encryption key. So once you have completed adding the environment variables and pulling and all that and pushing them to the vault, you can run npx.env vault build to encrypt and uh, build your store so that when you are deploying your code, you won't need to have uh, these .env files here. So let's just delete the .env files and then you'll see what I mean. So let's try, for example, to just uh, run our project without the .env file. So let's reset this just to use whatever is available to it like that. So trying to access process.env.mysecretkey will be empty, right? Because we don't have any 
.n files here, right? So how do we get it from uh, the vault? Well, before I do that, um, there's something quick here we need to go through. So after we have built our project, .env instructs us here that we can actually commit our .env .vault file. When you are running the .env new command, it generated a new file here called .env .vault. So this file, you can commit it to your version control. So we can push it to git and uh, it is safe. So these are values used to encrypt your environment variables. So so they are not useful by themselves. Once you encrypt them, you also need to decrypt them. That's why you can commit to the .env.vault file to encrypt them and then you will have a .env key that you will use to decrypt them. So you can't access the environment variables without the decryption key. So for example, we can get the decryption key that we'll use to decrypt our environment variables by pulling it from .env via npx.envvault keys. So let's say you want to uh, pull keys from our production environment. So this will pull the key and show us the key. So this is what you will save in your production setting as your .env key. So if you want to read uh, the secret here, we will need to copy our decryption key and then set it as an environment variable in our production setting and then we can run our command and that way we get our secret key. You can see that env has automatically loaded the encrypted key from the env.vault file. So the fields are in these files here but you just can't read them because you don't have the decryption keys. So that adds to the security of your environment variables. So other services work in a similar way. Instead of uh, setting your variables here in ten files you go to a platform that you are using and then you set your keys there and then you use that platform's api to access your keys so the only link between you and the keys is your decryption key so the upside to dot env's approach here is for a malicious actor to be able to get your environment variables they need access to your code because they need access to the dot env dot vault file and also they need access to your dot env key so this makes it harder to read those environment variables. So I don't know if uh, I was clear enough in explaining how this works, but basically the idea is don't store environment variables in plain text in your code. If you have to, you can use .n files to store your environment variables and don't commit them. And also, you may accidentally commit your .n file, right? So to prevent uh, accidentally leaking it, make sure you encrypt it. So you can encrypt it via the .n's uh, vault service here, or you can use the third-party secret managers to never have to hard code them anywhere in your code base, whether it's .n files or anywhere you will just be reading them via an api so as long as you have the api key you can access them otherwise you can't so i hope uh, this video was informative in that aspect so thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video